Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP and today I'm going to talk about customizing professional firmware for the Ender 3v2. Um, the past couple months I've been using professional firmware for my Ender 3v2 and I really liked it. But over time I've discovered uh, some issues and some changes I'd like to make. One of the key changes is optimization for Octoprint. I use Octoprint uh, with all my printers and uh, use it extensively. I use it much more than I use the uh, screen on the actual printer. So what I like to do is make sure that any version of Morrow when I use is optimized for Octoprint. So I found this post on the Octoprint forums and it's a list of recommended features for Marlin. And the professional firmware doesn't implement all of these changes. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of the latest release, show you how I make a copy, then make a branch, and make these changes. And then I'll go ahead and compile the firmware and install it. The first step I want to take is I want to go ahead and clone this repository. So I'm going to go in here and copy the link to the repo. Once I've copied the link to the repo, I'm going to type in git clone. I'm going to go ahead and paste the name of the repo in. And because I already have a repository on my machine called Marlin, I'm going to call this Ender 3 v2. So this will be my local copy on my machine. Hit enter and then it's cloning the repository to my machine. And I can go ahead and just check and there it is right there. So completed that step. Next I'm going to open up the GitHub desktop app and I'm going to go ahead and add the repository that I've just cloned down. So I want to do add existing repository and I'm just going to navigate over my code folder in 3DP and then I'm going to go ahead and open this repository. And now this is copied over and the settings are all in GitHub. I'll go ahead and hit Fetch Origin just to make sure everything's synced up. And so now I have the release version in GitHub Desktop. Now, since I have everything copied over, I'm just going to go up to Branch and hit New Branch. And I'm just going to call this Ender 3 v 2 dash and then I'll, I'll just use my initials. Now I'm on this new branch. I'm not going to publish it. I'm just going to work on my machine. Um, that way I, I can just, I'm not going to worry about copying it up. So once I've done this, I'm going to switch over to VS Code. I'm going to start with a fresh instance of VS Code. And I'm going to go up to File and select add folder to workspace and then I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the clone directory which was the ender 3 v2 and add that to uh, visual studio code and I'm just going to arrange my windows a little bit and here's all the code and settings so I have all my code uh, loaded into VS Code. And then if I go down here and look at the bottom at the terminal, I'll notice that I'm on the correct branch. So I'm on that uh, Ender 3 v2 uh, MJW branch. And I'm just going to hit type in git status just to make sure. 
and everything's clean. I haven't made any changes yet. So this is perfect. So I'm not going to make any changes just yet. Uh, next, I have to fix some configurations. Okay, next step, I'm going to go ahead and open up my file explorer. And so I'm in my folder. And then I'm going to go to configurations. And there's some pre built configurations here. Um, and I'm interested, I have the 42 board and a BL touch clone. So I'm going to go into that folder, copy these configurations. I'm going to navigate back out to the Marlin folder. And then I'm going to paste those configuration files in. And I want to replace what's there. So now I have the correct configurations in place. Back over in VS Code, I'm going to go down here to the terminal and I'm just going to type git status and just make sure. Yep, and there's my three modified files. So that's perfect. Now, just to test to make sure everything's working, I'm going to go ahead and try compiling this to make sure that everything's working properly. When I compile, I use auto build Marlin in VS Code. So I'm going to open up my ABM panel and I am using, I need to look through these. I believe I need to use this uh, Creality 512. We're going to test that and see if that works. So I'm just going to hit build and down the bottom it should start working. And I'm going to let that run off camera. Okay, if you look down the bottom, you'll notice that the firmware did compile successfully. So since it did, I can go ahead and make my changes. I know that before I made my changes, everything worked. And I always like to verify that everything works before I make any changes whatsoever. So I'm just going to hit clean here to get rid of all the excess files. And then I'll start fresh. First thing I'm going to do is look at my various files and I want to go in the Marlin folder and I'm going to go to version.h and so I have the short version name I'm going to go ahead and dash one here or dash dash a and that way uh, when I finally compile this I'll look for that to make sure I've done the uh, that my changes have taken. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So the two files I want to work on uh, after the version.h is configuration and then configuration underscore advanced. Let me go ahead and open those up. I'm going to start with configuration.h and I'm just going to systematically uh, go down this list and look at the changes. Okay, so I've arranged my windows with my VS code on the left and my list of recommended uh, Marlin changes for Octoprint on the right. And basically, some of these changes have already been made, some have not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this first feature, this define um, nozzle park feature, and I'm just going to copy that. Then over in VS Code, I'm going to use the find feature and search, and that's already enabled. Next, I have a speaker. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm not going to bother with the sound menu because I don't use either of those. Now I'm going to go ahead in this next feature, LCD set progress manually. I'm going to copy that. And that's over in the configuration advanced. I'm going to just start over in that file. So I'll paste that. That's already enabled. Then I'm going to go define show remaining time and search for that. And that is not enabled, so I'm going to enable it. Next item is the uh, use M73 remaining time, and that's right here. I don't even have to search for it. I'm going to enable that. 
I'm going to enable Rotate Progress Display. Next feature is LCD Progress Bar. I don't think I have this type of screen, but I'm going to go ahead and enable it anyway. It won't hurt. So define LCD Progress Bars right here, so I'll enable it. I'm going to go to the next item, which is Long Hosting Support. Let's copy that, and then over here again to search. It's already enabled. Auto Report SD Status. So we'll search for that feature. That needs to be enabled. Let's enable it. Arc support, I know that's already enabled, but just consistency sake, we'll go ahead and search for it. And it's already enabled. Uh, next, we're going to do the block buffer size. Now, block buffer size, you can see on my screen, is listed three times. I'm not exactly sure which one we need to change, so I just change all three. I'm bumping those up to 64. And next I have buff size, that goes from 4 to 32. Text buffer size is 32, and it's already 32. Next we're going to RX buffer size. And I need to enable that, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to 2048. Okay, emergency parser. It's enabled already. It's good. Advanced OK. I believe it's already enabled, but I'm going to check it anyway. Yep, already enabled. Advanced pause feature should already be enabled. It is. We want to do host prompt support. Copy that. And search down. That's enabled. Good. Arc head on pause. See if that's enabled. And it is. Good. And we already checked host prompt support and that's enabled. Now we're going to do auto report temperatures. And that's already enabled. Next feature auto report position. And that needs to be enabled. We're doing M114 detail. It needs to be enabled. And then right underneath it, M114 real time needs to be enabled. Now I also skip down. I notice report band change. That needs to be enabled. That and extended report capabilities. It's already enabled. Good. We just did report fan changes. Now one of my favorites here is meat pack. And that optimizes and minimizes, basically minifies your G code as it's sent from Octoprint over your printer. Yeah, so I've opened up just Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. And I'm going to go back over to Auto Build Marlin. And I'm going to go ahead and click Build. And as I mentioned, I believe I'm going to get an error here. I'll have to turn a setting off. But I'll explain that in a minute. Let me let this run, and then I'll, when it finishes, I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, I've got my error in my build, so I'm going to scroll up here, and here is my error. It's related to meat pack and binary file transfer. Binary file transfer is used uh, to do uh, updates to your firmware, I think via 
octoprint, but that's not the way I do it, so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just copying this binary file transfer. I'm going to go up to the configuration advanced underscore H. Again, go back up to that find feature, and I'm going to find a binary file transfer. And I'm just going to turn that off because I'd rather use Meat Pack than this feature. I use Meat Pack pretty much every print, where this would just be we're upgrading firmware, and I just use the SD card. So I've gone ahead and made that change, so I'm going to go back to Auto Build Marlin. Let me run a clean, get rid of all those leftover files. This will take a minute. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit build. And I'll pause and let this build offline. As you can see at the bottom here of VS Code, I have successfully compiled firmware. I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, link here. And this should open up my file explorer. And it has. And as you can see, there is highlighted the firmware. I'm going to copy that and go over to my SD card. I have the old firmware right here, so I'm going to go ahead and rename that. Change the extension to old. That way I, I know I have a working copy of firmware if I have to roll back. And I'm going to go ahead and hit paste. So I put the new firmware on the SD card. And let me go ahead and eject that, and then I'll move over to my printer. Okay, so here is the screen of my Ender 3 v 2 I've put the SD card in, so let me go ahead and turn the printer on. Make sure this updates. This should take a minute. Okay. Here's maybe an update, but let's go ahead and check the info. Now I have to navigate around and find the info screen. Ah, here it is under control. And you'll notice that the firmware version has my dash A. So now this firmware has been updated. Uh, updated to include uh, my changes and that is how you go ahead and update the professional firmware if you need to incorporate any of your own changes today we've gone over how to update the professional firmware if you have any changes you want to make um, as I've mentioned before, one of my favorite is to turn on Meat Pack to uh, optimize how my uh, G code is being sent from Octoprint over to the printer. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please go ahead and post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I appreciate your time. Again, this is Mike from Minimal3DP. Have a good night.